Our scripture lesson comes to us this morning from the Gospel of John, chapter 9, verses 1 through 41. Could everybody please come up here? Thank you. As Jesus walked along, he saw a blind a man blind from birth. Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's work might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes. Go wash in the pool of Siloam which means sent. Then he went and washed and came back able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, It is he. <coughs> Others were saying, No, but it is someone like him. I am the man. But they kept asking him, Then how were your eyes opened? The man called Jesus made mud spread it on my eyes, and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. Where is he? I do not know. They brought the Pharisees to the Pharisees, the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was the Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also began to ask him how he had received his sight. He put mud on my eyes, then I washed, and now I see. This man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. How can a man who is a sinner perform such things? And they were divided. What do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened. He is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight. Is this your son, who you say was born blind? Then how, is, then how does he now see? We know that this is our son and that he was born blind. But we do not know how it is that he sees, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he is of age, he will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore his parents said, he is of age, ask him, so for the second time they called the man who had been blind, and they said to him, Give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? I have told you already, and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciple? You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. Here is an astonishing thing. Do you not know where he comes from? And yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but he does listen to one who worships him and obeys his will. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. You were born entirely in sins, and are you trying to teach us? And they drove him out. Jesus heard that they had driven him out. And when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? And, he, and who is he, sir? Tell me, so that I may believe in him. You have seen him, and the one speaking to you is he. He said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. I came into this world for judgment, so that those who do not see may see, and those who who do see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not blind, are we? If you were blind, you would not have sinned. But now you say, we see, your sin remains. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Would you join me in prayer? Loving God, help us to open our eyes to what you want us to see, your grace, your mercy, and your love for all. Amen. Amen. 
Whenever we read the Gospel of John, it's important to hear the reason John gave us for writing his Gospel. John says, these things are written so that you might believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing in him, you may have life. Now, in this masterful story that John tells, there are six what I call characters. First, there are the 12 disciples of Jesus who pose a faulty theological question. Let me get back to that question. Secondly, there's a man without a name who is referred to only as the man blind from birth or the man who had formerly been blind. The third is the group collectively referred to as the neighbors and those who had seen him before as a blind man begging. There are the religious leaders. We know them as the Pharisees. They are the parents of this man born blind, and then standing light stage, appearing only at the beginning of this story, and absent until the very end is the man called Jesus. By the way, the absence of Jesus in this story is the longest absence of Jesus in any of the gospel stories. And in this story, there is only one thing and one thing only that everyone agrees on, that there was a man born blind. As Jesus and his disciples are making their way to Jerusalem, they see a man blind from birth. The sight of this man who had been born blind drove the disciples to ask this theologically dubious question, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? It is an age-old theological question, and one that still stirs great theological debate. Who is to blame when someone is born physically or mentally challenged? It was a question I wrestled with myself when I interned as a seminarian at the Georgia Retardation Center in Atlanta, Georgia. At the time, I was assigned to the ward with the most seriously, physically, and mentally challenged children who had been born in ways that even as I speak of it now, still haunts me. There was the eight-year-old boy without arms or legs, eyes or ears, who just wanted to be touched, and I just couldn't do it. There was the 10-year-old girl whose hands had to be strapped to her chair because she would hurt herself or her caregivers if not. There was a 12-year-old girl suffering from hydrocephalus and whose head was three times bigger than her body and who could not get up from her hospital bed because her body could not support her head and I could barely look at her. And every week that I had to go to what I thought at the time was a God-forsaken place, I was angry with God and kept asking over and over again, who sinned? these children or their parents, that they were born this way. So I understand the disciples' question to Jesus. Rabbi, who sent this man or his parents that he was born blind? What the disciples didn't understand, and I didn't understand when I was working at that center in Georgia, is that the Bible does not support the idea of punishment for sin being passed from one generation to the next. In truth, the prophet Jeremiah says that under the new covenant, the sins of the fathers will no longer be passed to their children. So although this question makes for great theological debate, Jesus isn't interested in a theological debate. So Jesus dismisses the disciples' question with these words, neither. Neither this man nor his parents sinned, but that the works of God might be revealed in him. You see, the disciples were looking backwards Jesus was looking forward. The disciples were seeking a cause for the curse while Jesus sees a purpose for the problem. We too often focus on what is rather than what can be. And so dismissing their question, Jesus proceeds to do the work he was sent to do. And then doing a most uncivilized thing, Jesus spits on the ground, makes mud of the spittle, spreads the mud on the man's eyes, and then says to him, go wash in the pool of Siloam. And the man went, washed, and returned with his eyes opened and the ability to see. Now, it seems to me this story ought to end here, 
with everyone celebrating and rejoicing that a man born blind has been given the gift to see for the first time in his life. There ought to be a celebration over eye-opening miracles, but instead of celebration, there is consternation. Instead of cheering, there is confusion. A strange thing happens when this man born blind returns from his bath with the ability to see. The neighbors and those who have seen him every day blind and begging. The neighbors, those who passed him by and once in a while dropped a coin in his begging hat. Those same neighbors were now confused. Although this was the same man and although he wore the same clothing, although nothing about him had changed except now his eyes were open, his eyes were opened, the neighbors and those who had seen him before as a blind man begging started asking each other, is this the same man who used to sit and beg? Now the only difference we can detect in this man who had been born blind is that his eyes are now open. There was no confusion about his identity when he was blind and begging. In fact, all was well in the neighborhood until this man born blind was blessed by Jesus to be blind no more. Strange things happen when our eyes are open and we see things as they are. Yogi Berra once said, you can observe a whole lot just by watching. <laughs> this man born blind took a bath and his ability to see caused confusion for those who knew him when he was just a blind beggar. The neighbors looked at him and said, is that the same man who used to sit and beg? Some said, no, that isn't him. It just looks like him. Others said, I, I think it is him. Still others said, no, it isn't him. It's just someone who looks like him. Now, this man was unsure of a lot of things after all. He was seeing the world for the very first time, so he couldn't be certain of much, but he at least knew his own identity. And so he simply kept repeating, even though they weren't listening to him, it's me, yeah, it's me, it's me, look at me, it's the same guy. Finally, the neighbors asked, well, if you're the same man that used to sit and beg, how the heck were your eyes opened? And he answered, you know, there was a man called Jesus. Now, let me take a little detour here. History tells us that a man called Jesus stepped into human history and the world changed forever. History tells us that a man called Jesus entered the world and institutions and lives were transformed. A man called Jesus came and preached good news for all and his message caused men and women, we call them missionaries, to leave their homes to spread that gospel. A man called Jesus stepped on the scene and places like Harvard, Princeton, Yale, Columbia, Brown University, and even my alma mater dear Morehouse College were established to prepare people to be ministers of that gospel. A man called Jesus stepped into history and hospitals became necessary, slavery became unacceptable, war became indefensible, poverty was problematic, all because of this man called Jesus. And so when he was asked how his eyes were opened, the man born blind said, a man called Jesus spit in the dirt, made mud out of that spittle, spread it on my eyes, told me to go wash in the pool of Siloam. I went and washed and now I can see, I can see. Now the neighbors were so unsettled by this eye opening miracle that they took the formerly blind man to the Pharisees who were upset that it was a Sabbath day when Jesus spit and made mud and caused this miracle to take place. And so the Pharisees asked the man how he had received his sight. And he said the man called Jesus, spit in the dirt, made mud out of that spittle, spread it on my eyes, told me to go wash in the pool of Siloam. I went and washed and now I can see. Well, the Pharisees didn't like this answer at all. So after talking among themselves, they decided perhaps this man had never been blind in the first place. That perhaps the miracle was just a hoax. So they decided to take the man to his parents, hoping the parents would say, you're right, he really wasn't born blind. It was just a hoax so he could beg for money. But the parents knew that if they gave the wrong response, they could be banished from the synagogue. So when the Pharisees asked his parents, is this your son whom you claim was born blind? 
And if it is, how then is he now able to see? The parents answered, well, listen, there are only two things we know for sure. This is our son, and he was born blind. Now, how his eyes were opened, we know not. But you are in luck, because he, have, he is of age, so you can just ask him. Unable to discredit the miracle, they decided to try and discredit the miracle worker. So for the second time, they called the man who had been born blind to task. They needed to shake his story punch holes in the tale he was telling. They had to ensure that Jesus was not given credit for this miracle. So they said to the formerly blind man, we, we need to have a conversation with you. We need to clear this matter up. So the Pharisees asked, what do you know about this man called Jesus? The man said, I know nothing of this man called Jesus. There is only one thing that I do know. I was blind and now I can see. So then the Pharisees said, this man called Jesus is a sinner. Sinners can't work miracles. The man replied, whether he be a sinner or not, I know not. I can't speak to what sinners can and cannot do. But there is one thing that I do know. I was blind and now I can see. By this point, the Pharisees are beside themselves with anger. And so the Pharisees said to the man, we are disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses, but for, the, as this, for this man, we do not know where he comes from or who speaks to him. And the man said, and as for me, I know not where he comes from either. I know not to whom God speaks, but there is one thing that I do know, that I was blind and now I can see. Now, the Pharisees said, never since the world began has anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. What say you about that? The man said, I told you once, but you refuse to listen. Do you want to hear it again? I know not whether he is a sinner or not. I don't know how the history of the world. I've never studied the way it functions, but there is one thing that I know, one thing that I have no question about, one thing that I know that I know I know, and I know for certain, and you can't make me doubt it, that once I was blind, and now I can see. My sisters and brothers, who among us has not experienced blindness in one form or another. When we put self before and above others, we are blind. When we hold grudges and refuse to forgive, we are blind. When we do what is easy rather than what is right, we are blind. When we turn a blind eye to the poor, the outcast, the marginalized, those yearning to breathe free, we are blind. Blindness affects our communities economically, socially, and politically. And when we allow our blindness to close us off from those in need, we become like the people in this story that John tells, blind to what is happening in and around our world and in our lives. So what finally happened to that man born blind? As John tells this story, this formerly blind man moved from identifying his healer only as the man called Jesus, to telling the Pharisees that Jesus is a prophet, and then when pressed, declared that he must be a man sent from God. And they became so angry with that formerly <coughs> blind man until they drove him out of town. And when Jesus heard about this, Jesus did what Jesus always did. Jesus went seeking this man out and welcomed him as one of the many unknown unnamed disciples spreading the good news of God's love to everyone. Yes, that's what Jesus does. Jesus welcomes all to come out of the darkness, the blindness that all too often surrounds our world and our lives and walk in the light of God's love. My sisters and brothers, may God so open our eyes that we may see to follow the one who gave his life for us.